Hello everybody, welcome to the Yeshua Network. We are facebook.com forward slash Yeshua official. We have some dogs barking in the background. They want to join us today in our 40 day prayer challenge. That's 39 days today, 39th day today. And the prayer today, or the topic of today's prayer challenge today is the Shema. Um, the Shema is the most holy prayer in the Old Testament. It is, let me see if I can get to a better spot. These dogs are playing. Let's see. Hold on one sec. I apologize, everybody. Let's see. This might be a little bit better. All right. So the Shema. What is the Shema? Some of you may have never even heard of the Shema, and it is the most important prayer, one of the most important passages in the Old Testament. It is the first thing that the Holy of Holy uh, Priests, the High Priest, what he says when he enters into the Holy of Holies. And this is how it goes. Shema Israel. Adonai Elohenu Adonai Achad. And if you don't know what it means, I'll tell you. What it means is here, as in listen, Israel, our Lord is God, our Lord is one. So it's basically saying it's 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 very much making sure that the people of Israel are declaring that they're a monotheistic belief, that there is no other God than the one God that they have. This, this prayer is so important to them because almost all other cultures around the world at the time were all polytheistic. So they believed in multiple gods. It was like pagans, uh, as we might easily reference the idea of. You have a god for the forest, you have a god for the ocean, you have a god for the clouds, things like that. But the Jews had one god. And the importance of this is that this prayer came to Moses uh, and Aaron. And this was the prayer that God gave them to say in the Holy of Holies when they created the tabernacle. And so when God first spoke to Moses and Moses saw him as the burning bush and he said, Lord, who do I tell the people that you are that sent me? So they know that I'm not lying. So they know that you genuinely sent me. And the Lord replies, tell them I am sent you. So he doesn't give them a name. He gives them more of a, a statement. God is. He doesn't need anything else to create him. It, you know, uh, him is how we reference it in Christianity. But if you're new to, uh, to this page or you're new to these uh, videos, you know, you might think of God as more of just this cosmic energy. But God, that is the creator of all things, the consciousness that is the life of all the universe and all things that exist created by its design, that is the God that the Jews believe in. And they call that God Yahweh. But Yahweh is actually not the full name of the God they worship. That's like a nickname. Yahweh is actually kind of the name of, of four letters that they put together that actually compo uh, composes a very long name, which is 256 characters long. That's the actual real name of God, which supposedly nobody actually knows the real name of God today. But the Shema is a reminder of who their God is to them. It's a, it's, it's the, it's such a, such an important prayer. Let me, let me explain to you how important this prayer is. In the Holy of Holies, where this prayer would be said, the gold smoke of God would fill the Holy of Holies. And the high priest would have to wear certain elements to protect himself from the experience of being directly in contact with this gold smoke. If the high priest should think so much as the wrong thing, if he should mess up on this prayer, the Shema, if he should, instead of thinking Adonai, think of a, a name like Ralph or James or just any other name or the name of another God, he would literally die. And since nobody else could go into the Holy of Holies other than the high priest because he was chosen and anointed and he would have the blood sprinkled on him before he could go in, if anybody else tried to go into this room, they would die. And so the concern was, is if the high priest makes a mistake while saying this prayer, while going through his atonement on Yom Kippur for this event, he dies in there. Nobody can go in there and get him because they'll die going in there and getting him. So what do we do if the high priest goes in and makes a mistake and dies in the Holy of Holies? That's how serious this prayer is. That's how much emphasis God put on the Shema. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. 
God made it such an important prayer. He put so much emphasis on it that you would die as the holy of holy priest atonement giver if you, if you messed up in that room. So they tied a rope to either his ankle or his waist and they put bells on him. And if the bell stopped making noise or it sounded like he hit the ground and crashed and then all of a sudden there was no noise for a couple minutes, since nobody could go in there, they put the rope on him so they could drag him out. That's a pretty big emphasis on this prayer, isn't it? I don't know most churches that even talk about the Shema, which is kind of mind-blowing. The, the prayer that is, is the very first opening thing he has to say when he goes into the Holy of Holies, the declaration of who exactly their God is, which is our God as Christian believers or, or Yeshua believers or followers of the way, whatever you, you refer to yourself as. But this prayer is definitely not taught in the Christian community of its great importance. And today I wanted to... I was thinking to myself, how are we going to wrap this up? Well, I already promised you guys that on the 40th day, we would kind of recap the entire arc of what the Lord had spoken to us. So tomorrow is already kind of the topic is already set in place. So today's really the last day for the Lord to come through and really speak something that I believe he would want to emphasize the importance of. And since this is a 40 day prayer challenge, it obviously makes sense that today the Lord had put it on my heart to, to teach about the Shema, the most important prayer probably in the Bible. Now, Christians might believe that the most important prayer in the Bible is the Lord's Prayer, as they nickname it, uh, the one that we started on the second day. And I believe that that's a pretty important prayer too. It is a New Testament prayer. It is the new focus of the personality of God. It is a, a prayer that's probably even more important in the sense that it allows us to know how to relate to God and how to pray to God in our intimate personal prayer. But for the Old Testament, the Shema is hands down the most important prayer of all. And any time that the Hebrew people or the Jewish people got off course from believing or following God's commandment that he is one Lord, that they should have no other, no other idols or anything for them to worship to get into the way between their relationship and him, he killed them. It doesn't sound like a very loving God, but if he allowed them a little bit of maneuver space to where they could have false idols and still have a relationship with God, then those of us today in the year 2018 would probably be very, very confused about who our God is, which is ironic because Yeshua said that. Yeshua said that the Gentiles worship a God they do not know, but it is for the Jews to know, for it was given unto them to know God. And so if we are to really know who our God is as a follower of Yeshua, we should understand what the Jews understand about their God, Yahweh. And that can be found in the Shema. Shema Israel, Adonai Elechenu Adonai Echad. It's a beautiful prayer, isn't it? Very powerful. I hope you guys will join me on it today as we pray. I'm going to pray that it is something that you meditate on. I'm going to pray that it's something that you learn. I think it's a great way to open up a prayer since that's what they did in the Holy Holies. And Jews, by the way, still use this prayer on certain occasions and still on Yom Kippur when they pray. This prayer is actually used twice per service uh, for the Jewish people when they go to temple. Twice per service. Um, it's given at the opening of the service, at the closing of the service, and it's also given when they break bread or when they eat food. Um, they declare it once again at that point. So if you guys have never learned this before, I, I hope this is a new thing for you. But if you have learned it before, I hope that this uh, just refreshes the importance of the Shema in your life, in your walk with God. And um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing, amazing, simple, yeah, hyper focus. It's like a razor's edge of importance. Why is this prayer so important? It's very, very important that God wants you to know he is a one God, not a multi-God, not a lot of different divisions of him, not different sections of him that we are to worship. There is only one God, one Lord, only one person who we are to pray to, only one. And that is why this prayer literally had death attached to it if it was prayed wrong. There is no other prayer in the Bible that if a person prayed it wrong, they would die. <laughs> I think God was trying to tell us something when he put that level of importance on this prayer. Don't you?
So I think it's suiting that today on the 39th day of the 40-day prayer challenge here on the Yeshua network, which Yeshua means Yahweh is salvation, makes it very clear, doesn't it, who Yahweh is? He is our Savior. He is our Lord and our God. Just as Doubting Thomas said when he stuck his fingers in the Lord's hands and, and, and in his rib, he kneeled down on the ground before Yeshua and he said, My Lord and my God. He knew exactly who was robed in that body. The Shema made it very clear to him who was in that body. I hope you guys will join me. Let's go ahead and begin this prayer on this day. Almighty Yahweh, we thank you so much for the 39 days of prayer so far in this 40-day prayer challenge. We thank you so much for the Shema. We thank you so much that you put so much emphasis and weight on this very simple and short prayer that you would allow us to understand how clearly you did not want anything else to come between us and you. You wanted us to forever remember there is no other Lord in our life but you, Almighty Yahweh. You are Yeshua. You are Yahweh is salvation. You are Emmanuel. Yahweh is with us. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you so much that you have been such a great father to us. And a great father teaches his children perfectly. And Lord, you have absolutely given us the perfect message, the perfect love letter, the Bible. We thank you so much for that, Lord. We thank you for your written word. We thank you for your spoken word. We thank you for your message coming through all these ages, being protected by your Holy Spirit, kept pure and clean, Lord. We thank you for, for the ancient scrolls that have been found that confirm your word, Lord. We thank you that you preserve them, that today in the modern world we can know beyond the shadow of a doubt what was taught back then is what is taught today. We thank you, Almighty Yahweh, for the Holy of Holies, for the tabernacle. We thank you so much for the cross and the resurrection. We thank you so much for the promise of those who receive the cross, for the cleaning of the saints by the blood, Lord. We thank you so much for the resurrection on your return. We thank you so much for paradise and eternity with you, for those who have received you, for those who you have written the name on the book of life. We thank you, Almighty Lord, that you love us so much that you would create us in your own image to have relationship with you for all eternity. We thank you so much that your beauty is brighter and shines greater than any light or any beauty we will ever know. We thank you so much that you have designed us to be a beings that love, beings that desire relationship. We thank you so much, Lord, that the only thing that truly satisfies our soul is your love and your relationship. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray for every single person who will partake in this 40-day prayer challenge. It doesn't matter on what day it happens, Lord. My prayer goes out to all souls into the future. I pray for everybody who comes on to the Yeshua Network here at Facebook.com. I'm not pitching it, Lord, but we are Yeshua Official. Sorry. And uh, it's not Yeshua Network, but we are Yeshua Network, Lord. And I thank you for my ministry. I thank you for the blessings you give me. I'm humbled that these 39 days, Lord, have been so wonderful and such a blessing, not just for me, but for all the people who have testified already of the experience they've had, Lord. How can we ever thank you that you are still the one true living God, still in our life, still working in the world, still providing the Holy Spirit, still performing your miracles and still working and bearing fruit on us, through us, and spilling our cups over onto anybody who you will? How can we ever thank you for that? Today we try our best with praise and worship in Yeshua HaMashiach's name to you, Yahweh. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. I love God. Ah. I hope you guys will learn the Shema. You can learn it in English or Hebrew. I personally like to pray it in Hebrew. Um, the, definitely the high priest would have never prayed it in English or Latin or Greek or anything like that. Uh, it is such a wonderful, powerful prayer. And, and the more time you spend on it and the more time that you... Uh, you really focus on, 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 on the things that I've said today that the level of importance that God has put on it, there's, there's got to be a reason. There must be a reason. He put so much weight on the Shema and on the Holy of Holy uh, you know, interaction with the high priest. You know, Yeshua, didn't, Yeshua never said to, the, said to the guys when they say, teach us how to pray. He never said, our Father who art in heaven, but wait, if you do this wrong, you're going to die. So make sure that you like, you know, have some rope tied around you. <laughs> that, he didn't say that at that point. So there's something to this. Um, 
Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us on the 40-Day Prayer Challenge. Tomorrow, we're going to recap kind of the arc of the story of what the Lord has given us through this, the things we've gone over. We'll highlight it. We'll pray together, and we will pray for our future as believers, for our ministries, each and every single one of us, and our unity as a global body of Christ. And, uh, and we will give praise and thanks for all the wonderful things the Lord has done in our lives over these last 40 days and will continue to do into the future, 2018 and beyond. So thank you guys so much. Tomorrow is the last day of the 40-Day Prayer Challenge, and I, I am just, I'm a little shocked. It, it went by a lot faster than I thought it would, and I'm really, really blessed that you guys partook in this. I'm really blessed that Brian uh, shared the idea with me and that, you know, the Holy Spirit moved in him for us to do this. It's been a true blessing, and you guys have gotten to know uh, us a little bit better here who own or manage the page. You know, before, we never showed our face uh, until end of last year nobody ever knew who we were nobody ever saw who we were but you know the lord kind of called us out with this and and you guys kind of got to know us a little bit better so uh it's been a pleasure getting to know you guys it's definitely been more of an intimate relationship i feel like we have fellowship through this page uh i i am blessed by our fellowship and i i hope it doesn't stop uh, we will obviously continue to figure out a way maybe we'll do this once a week or maybe we'll you know we still have hashtag be the light on the 22nd of every month but this has been a real blessing to interact with you guys and pray with you guys and uh and if it blesses the lord you don't want to stop so we will figure out some way where we keep uh, praying with each other and having fellowship like this on that note since we are here to be blessings and to bless others Please do as we've been doing which is to leave your location Meaning your city your state your country that you're in so that anybody who might be around you who doesn't have fellowship Or just looking for more brothers and sisters to connect with they can reach out to you and connect with you um, Have an open arms to them. You know all you're doing is, is giving a, a way for you to interact and chat here on Facebook with somebody um you know, don't leave your address or anything like that, you know, but just allow people to know, hey, I'm here. I'm a brother in Christ or sister in Christ at this location. If you're out there in the world, say hello. Um, what a great way to plug in and use this medium as a way to fellowship and build the body of Christ in flesh, in person. Um, what else? Um, hashtag be light we talked about. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. Be blessed. Be the blessing. And once again, we just thank you so much from the bottom of our heart here at uh, Yeshua Network. Thank you so much.